how does commercial real estate work as an asset class? Yeah, so how commercial real estate works as an asset class is, first off, there, we have to understand there's just types of commercial real estate. And so when we say commercial real estate, people don't really understand the difference between residential and commercial. Residential is single family houses, townhouses, condos, and multifamily four units and below. Everything else is commercial, everything. So that includes office, retails, hotels, hospitality, industrial, mixed use, multifamily, family, land, self-storage, and special purpose. Those are kind of your general commercial categories. What happens when you go and buy a commercial property? Okay, you go buy a strip mall. You can take ownership in various types. You can take direct ownership. So I could go buy it as Anton Stetner. I could buy it as Anton Stetner just inside of XYZ LLC. We could do it as a partnership where Benji and Anton own a 100-unit apartment building as XYZ LLC. REITs, Real Estate Investment Trust. Those are big commercial property owners across the U.S. They allow lots of people to invest inside of them. What you do is you put your money in, it's locked up for a period of time, and the REIT goes and buys performing assets. Uh, REITs are notorious for buying large apartment complexes, malls, large office buildings, things like that. There's also insurance companies and pension funds who will go buy large commercial buildings for the performance. Uh, there's your general funds where uh, you're going to go invest in a real estate fund and the real estate fund may be the industrial real estate fund and that only invests in real estate and they're kind of give you a guidance on returns. Last but not least, there are syndications and syndications is where for a specific property, a general partner gathers a bunch of limited partners, aka investors, and then goes and finds them. So we do actually all of these except for REITs. We do funds, we do syndications, we do partnerships. So happy to chat with you guys more about investing opportunities. But like in general, how does a commercial asset make money? A commercial asset makes money through it being leased out or rented. So if you think of the little strip mall with the teriyaki place and it's got the nail salon and it's got a little mailbox place and it's the little three stores, all three of those little stores are rented. They pay rent on a monthly basis for their lease and that money then comes to the landlord. So when you go purchase a commercial asset, what you're thinking about, okay, what type of reward could I get for purchasing this asset class? So generally speaking, the one everyone wants, and this is why it's the first one on the list, income generation. We buy it for cash flow, okay? And that, once again, is coming in through the rent or the leasing of that particular property. Now realize land is part of this. So Sometimes land is leased or sometimes land is for agricultural purposes, you know, such as timberland. So there may not be a monthly lease or if it's farmland, there could be a monthly lease. Or if it's a development project, there's probably no income and you're just burning it until you get to the end. The next thing that most investors are looking for inside of this asset class is what's called capital appreciation. Investors know that generally speaking, the real estate asset is going to go up in value over time. So the capital appreciation is the appreciation of the real estate asset. This is one of my favorite ones is the tax write-offs through the depreciating of the asset. And then a lot of people, especially right now, are talking about uh, real estate assets as a possible hedge against inflation. And that's historically been one of the, the things that they've done. Now let's go into just like real quickly, like what are the risks? The risks associated with commercial real estate is they're generally larger, more expensive buildings or projects. So they're called illiquid. And commercial real estate is sometimes just referred to as CRE. So they say CRE is a relatively illiquid asset. In other words, it takes time to sell. So if you have a stock, you can go to the stock market, I can open my app, I can press a button and boom, it sells instantly. And I could transfer out of that brokerage account and I can have the money in max three days. If I go to sell a residential piece of real estate, that's probably gonna take me two weeks to 30 days to sell it. And then I'm gonna get paid 30 days later. So I can have the money in two months, maybe three. A commercial asset, because they're so much more expensive and the due diligence is such done at such a higher level, a commercial asset will take you anywhere between one to six months to sell. Then it takes that borrower 60 to 90 days to close on the loan. So if I want to sell my large office building today, I'm probably getting paid in as short of time as five months to as long as a year from now. A year, wow. Also, vacancy can be a problem. See, when I own a simple duplex, it's easy to operate. If you own 
a large strip mall with an anchor tenant and the anchor tenant is Whole Foods and Whole Foods moves out, it's going to take you a year, two years, three years to replace that. So part of commercial real estate is being able to weather these larger storms. Commercial real estate, just like residential, is leveraged, but the numbers are bigger. So you take a home here in Marysville and let's just say, you know, it's a $750,000 home and maybe you've got 600 grand worth of leverage against it. A commercial asset is going to be like a $3 million asset and you're going to have $2.2 million worth of debt against it. So the leverage just becomes more risk because the numbers are bigger.